Um, wanted to, to thank all of you for, for coming. Um, and we're really what we're looking to, to do here is we're wanting to, to, to get, we've already got partnerships in place. What, what affects you affects us as legislators. What we do obviously affects you. And the last three years, we've had uh, three pieces of, of legislation that have uh, gotten all the way through the process, been signed into law, that have affected some of you, uh, and, uh, and some of you it's affected pretty dr dramatically. Um, and so really, what I wanted to do was take just a, a minute to tell you why we need your help and why we need you to engage. Um, and quite frankly, it's for your benefit. Um, last year, uh, the, there was a bill passed uh, concerning civil forfeiture, really affecting uh, law enforcement. Now, the, the issue is not all legislation goes to every member of the legislature. And as a matter of fact, in this one instance, uh, that particular bill went to one committee and then went to the floor. And so unless you serve in that committee, you don't get the advanced briefing on what's going on there. And, uh, and unless somebody contacts us and says, hey, you need to take a real close look at this, um, we may not get a real cl close look at it. Last year, what, how many pieces of, of legislation just out of the Senate, there were what, a thousand? Uh, yeah, a little, 1,500. 15, yeah. So 3,000 total pieces of legislation, potentially. So the question comes up, don't you read every piece of legislation? And the answer is, really, you don't. You don't, ha I mean, you, you have 60 days, um, you can't read 3,000 pieces of legislation. So you're really reliant upon a couple of things. First off, the people who serve in that committee who hear it, they will get a briefing through um, analysts who analyze it for us. We're very dependent on analysts. As a matter of fact, uh, Mike, could you stand up and wave at everybody real quick? Uh, this is Mike Meyer. Um, he has served as analyst for uh, the Republicans uh, for a couple of, of cycles, but the last cycle he served in Ways and Means, which is taxation and revenue. Um, and uh, this year he's available, so I snatched him up to be my uh, legislative aide. And Mike is going to work with myself and all of the other legislators uh, from San Juan County to be our person that if we need a bill analyzed, uh, Mike can do that. And in a little while, Mike uh, let you know what, what his background is and why, uh, why that's so important. But the other group of people besides the folks, the Republicans in my case, who I trust who sit in these other committees, the other people who, who contact us are your lobbyists. Everybody in here is represented by one lobbyist or another. And most of you in this room are represented by the same lobbyist. And, and, and to be honest, I think that might be a little bit of an issue because if there are five pieces of legislation moving through the process, that lobbyist can only be in one place at one time. And you know, they, I know they've got a couple of partners, but, but even so, especially in a condensed 30-day session, that person cannot be everywhere. And quite frankly, Nobody, including a lobbyist, is an expert on everything. So a, 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 once again, I'm going to take the example of the asset forfeiture law that came through. That went through one committee, and then it was kind of rushed to the floor. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure. There was, there, there was some politics behind that, and I don't know exactly what that was. But no one with any law enforcement agencies contacted me or other legislators and said, hey, wait a minute, take a real close look at this, including the lobbyist. Now, once again, that's a lot of reading. There's a lot of minutia there that nobody knows your business like you do. And nobody knows how something's going to affect you as much as you do. But literally, that bill got pushed through in a, in a fashion that said it is unconscionable that Somebody can have their property taken from them and sold before they have their day in court and before they're pronounced guilty. 
I don't think there's anybody in this room who disagrees with that. That's the way it was presented. And in that committee, there was nobody who stood up and said, wait a minute, the specifics of this bill are going to be this, this, this. So that's just one example. Two years ago, uh, we had the, uh, the bill go through that uh, really affected our hospitals and our county. The indigent, in, uh, the indigent care fund was affected, really harming our county's budget and initially harming uh, the hospital. Uh, the, the previous year, we had hold harmless done away with. Now, some of these were high-level negotiated things that I think there, mm, there may have been, like I said, there were some politics being played there. But you're heavy, heavily reliant on the folks who are studying the bills and trying to look at the impact uh, of those bills and were very reliant upon the lobbyists who represent each one of your organizations, whether it's the county, whether it's a city, whether it's a police department, the sheriff's office, whoever. Now, unfortunately, we've had three instances in a row where budgets have been vastly impacted. So we're trying something different this year, and, and this is what it is. And hopefully going forward, we can, we can do this again. And that is, Bill and I are going to team up uh, to make sure that the folks here, who's, especially the government entities whose budgets are going to be greatly affected potentially by a piece of legislation, know how to identify a piece of legislation and track it. You and us cannot rely solely on your lobbyists to, to bring up an issue, to pay attention to what's been, uh, to, to, to what could potentially affect you. Now, most of, these, most of your organizations and most of your lobbyists do a very good job in the lead up to the session with bills that are pre-filed. As a matter of fact, I've already had Mike go through and look at pre-filed bills and try and identify is there a bill in there that's going to uh, affect local government, whether it's a county or a city or a township? Uh, anything that could potentially affect the college, um, anything that could potentially affect law enforcement. Uh, and just, just now, some, of, some folks have better lobbyists and more lobbyists than others. The schools have very good lobbyists. And there isn't just one of them, there are 50 of them. Um, the hospital, yeah. <laughs> the hospital is also one of our partners, but they, they, do a, they, they very much pay attention to what's going on. Um, and quite frankly, the reason that that bill two years ago got through is because they thought they had a gentleman's agreement within their organization, and it was passed on to all the legislators who were sitting and said, okay, we're good with this. Well, then when it got passed, their gentleman's agreement didn't hold, and within their own organization, uh, the, the larger hospitals who had more, uh, more indigents that they have to care for, like uh, San Juan Regional, um, were outvoted by the smaller hospitals, and they, they changed the formula. And then they wanted to come back and blame the legislature. The, legislat the legislators, quite frankly, took their advice so, because what we're wanting to do, and Bill is going to go over this with you, he's got a great PowerPoint presentation, he's going to, uh, well, not a PowerPoint has a presentation, but the actual uh, legislative website, and is going to show you how you can track legislation, or at least identify legislation. Once again, at the beginning, we, all the organizations do a pretty good job of checking the pre-filed legislation. It's usually that legislation that comes in on the second day, the third day, the fifth day. And there is, they're all through the session, <coughs> especially during a 60-day session, legislation can be in introduced all day long. During a 30-day session, it can only get introduced if the governor puts it on the call. Now, I know there are folks in this room who have felt that the governor signing certain legislation or pushing certain legislation has affected them. So that could happen during a 30-day legislation as well. 
So the tracking that is done initially by your lobbyists, during the session, that really needs to be done by you. Lobbyists have a, almost a different role during the session. They're not necessarily tracking the new legislation as, as easily as they did in the lead up to the session, because quite frankly, if there's a bad bill that you know about, they're over there talking to 112 legislators trying to convince them to not support a bill, or if there's a good bill, to support that bill. And so they're doing a lot of other things that are interpersonal relations. So during the session, this is really something that somebody from each of your organizations needs to kind of keep their eye on. Every day, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it'll take initially the first part of the day seeing what bills were pre-filed the day before. And then quickly going through and seeing, okay, if there's something that says um, uh, food stamps, whatever, well, quickly you know whether or not that's going to affect your organization. But if it gets to something that says um, funds being distributed and it says, don't automatically assume that doesn't affect you. You need, to, you need to take a look in there and see that go beyond the title of the bill and see what's in there. And, wh and what you need to do is as soon as you, whoever the person is from your organization, sees a bill that may be of concern to you or could potentially affect you, whether it's positive or negative, you don't know, you need to run that up the fat flagpole to your department head, whoever that is. If it's, a, if it's the county manager, if it is the city manager, if it is your police chief, it is it, it, whoever it is, they need to get the heads up. Take a look at this, get some eyes on this, get more than just your sets of eyes on it. And there may be just a question, if this is going to affect us positively or negatively. You may not know. Either way, I'm going to want you to contact Mike, okay? Uh, Mike's number one job is going to be from keeping all of us from getting yelled at <laughs> next year. And, and quite frankly, uh, the last three years, there has been a series of legislators being blindsided, blindsided and uh, things being pushed. At this point, we're not necessarily trusting even everybody in our own party to be 100% above board on, because it might be great for the city of Albuquerque, but it might really screw Farmington or San Juan County. So we're not going to take that chance anymore. Um, you know, obviously in the lead up to the legislation, or legislature, all of you guys contact us and say, please push for this, please watch for this. But it's during the session when we're most vulnerable to being caught off guard. Literally, you have people wanting to talk to you, constituents coming and asking you about this bill or that bill. Real ID, I know, is going to keep us up late at night with a lot of constituents who are going to be, you know, I'm going to go see grandma. You can't ignore those folks. But literally, and I just want to give you guys kind of a quick understanding of what my day in the legislature looks like when, I, when there is legislation before me. Prior to going into a committee, where we're going to see five, six pieces of legislation, we have a pre-meeting prior to the meeting with, the re with our Republican analysts who will sit down and say, okay, we've gone over this one. Here's this section. I don't know what you think about this. Or they may come and say, no, this is a negative impact for this and this and this. No, this is a good piece of legislation for these reasons. We have that pre-meeting. And then all through that meeting, while conversation's going on, we are going through the legislation ourselves, trying to see, you know, see if there's something that was missed, or if, uh, or questions will arise, or your lobbyist will say something. Uh, we are against this for this reason, this reason, this reason. Normally, those lobbyists will have contacted us prior to. And then the questions, and then if there's just a question, we're not sure. I, during the, the last, I had it happen one time during the session where somebody contacted me and said, hey, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I'm watching you on the camera. I'm watching you on, because there's a video feed of a lot of our committees. I'm watching you on this issue. We knew this was an issue we were watching. Ask this question, because we don't know. And so I asked a question based on one, you know, um, from the county. 
got a call from somebody from the county, asked this question. So I asked the question that helped me determine and helped some of the rest of us determine which way we were going to go. Well, that's kind of what happens in committee. When we go to the floor, we're going to vote on stuff that I never saw in committee. It went to somebody else's committee. And when we walk on the floor, you get this barrage of people. Hello, Mr. Montoya. Uh, I am the third grade teacher at Esperanza. I've got some students with me. Do you have a little bit of time to talk? Can you take a picture with us? You, you do not say no. Those are your constituents. They're there for a reason. You're wanting to help those kids along, and you do that. Then you have a lobbyist come over to you, and they come and they say, hey, uh, Representative Montoya, we would sure like your vote on this bill or that bill, or if, or if it's Scott Scanlon, it's a, lot less in, it's a lot less formal. Rod, this is a bad bill. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> we get that. But by the time we sit down and it's time to start voting, you have, especially if you're in my position where in, you're in, on the House side, you get, an, you get an advance notice as to what may be contentious, what's going to be. Now, on Bill's side, it's a lot different. They, they, Bill might not even know. They'll have a list of what's going to come onto the floor, supposedly, and it may or may not. It's at the whim of the uh, floor leader. But at least I have a chance because I know what's going to come up and I usually get a, a, a bit of information and I can look and say, okay, this one's going to come up, S, SB uh, 45. And I can go to what I have right there and take a look at it. Now, I will look at it immediately if somebody's warned me to take a look at it. But usually, unless I have something that I'm taking care of, I will try and pre-advance, you know, look. But literally, I can't read through 50 pages in a particular bill and listen to the discussions that's going on and understand the language that it was written in, which I think is Klingon, <laughs> and understand it, especially if I am not a school administrator. So trying to digest it, trying to figure it out on the spot, now, you get better if, on the committees you're in because you get similar themes, similar topics if you get to spend, spend time in there. But literally on the, on, this, on the House floor, I may not have even heard about what's going to affect you until that moment. And unless I have some sort of warning or some sort of notification, or, and this is what usually happens, one of us who does know about it runs around to the other guys and say, hey, this is a bad bill, and this is why. Now, once again, you guys got to realize this is Republicans and Democrats have different views. Rural folks and city folks have different views. County folks and municipality folks have different views. Big schools and small schools have different views. So just because somebody comes over and says this is a bad bill, I will ask them why. And why is this bad for San Juan County? So. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to, I've, I've gilded this lily about as much as I can, I'm going to turn it over to, to Senator Scherer, but that's why it's so important for you to be paying attention every day during the session to go and look. Now you get to the last week, probably something is not going to get passed out of committee over to the other side and passed. However, three years ago, that's exactly what happened with the Hold harmless. Okay? So, you need to be vigilant. You need to be paying attention. When is bill being, a bill being filed? Some, I, I found there's, there's two ways to go. You can pre-file so you get an early number, so you can potentially get hurt early. Or the other way is, if there's some backdoor deal that you don't know that's going on, you don't see that until all of a sudden, boom, 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 dominoes start falling, and it's all of a sudden there. But you didn't know. You didn't, you didn't know. If you, weren't, if you weren't in that back room, you didn't know that's coming up. So it is very important that what Bill shows you, that somebody within your administration is paying attention every day during the session. It doesn't take very long to, there might be, thir at the beginning, there might be 50 bills filed on a single day. 
But to go through and just read the titles, see who it affects, this is concerning CYFD, it probably doesn't affect you. However, if you deal with kids, it might affect you. And if you deal with money in a county or city, it might affect you. Okay? So, everybody in this room, I think, knows of at least one situation where somebody in San Juan County feels like they lost something because of a bad piece of legislation. That is what we're, I would rather get yelled at in advance than when I come back. Why did you let this pass through? I, I, a, a friend of mine and, and I have probably a little bit of a, a, a poor relationship than we did prior to this last legislative session because of a misunderstanding on my end, a misunderstanding on his end. You guys, you guys need to know, we're not experts in what you do. Okay? So please notify us the first chance that you see something, and I'm asking you to intentionally see something. Intentionally go and look and see. So, nmlegis.gov. That's the website. That's the important thing right there. If you can get there, nothing is really very difficult on this thing once you get there. I'm going to do this in a couple of ways. First, you can see that there's, this is the website. There's a new website. I'm going to show you both of them briefly here. Uh, they both have basically the same information. Uh, the new website has a different search engine uh, that can help you out a little bit better. But the old website is the one that we're going to start with. And where we're going to start is legislation. So over here where it says legislation, where's my button? Uh, there we go. There's three parts of it here. I'm going to start today with the daily bill locator because everything that's been on introduced so far for right now is there. And then, of course, you've got to pick your session. So you can go back and look at old bills. But there we go. So these are the bills that are on the, the daily bill locator today. And if you just scroll down... And scroll, 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 and scroll. We're not even in session yet. There you go. Last time I looked, there were 248 bills. There were about 50 memorials. Now, memorials have different purposes. One, it can say, you know, this is Bill Sharer's a great day in the Senate memorial. Or it can say, this is Bill Sharer's not a great day in the Senate memorial. Uh, you, but a lot of them you can see Leadership New Mexico Day. That's a memorial. There's also resolutions. And resolutions are generally uh, proposed constitutional amendments. So 248 bills, uh, 50 memorials, and a uh, little over a dozen uh, constitutional amendments have already been filed. That number might already be out of date because I had to drive from 20th Street to down here and then we had to listen to rods. There could be another 100 bills on there by the time we got here. So I don't really know. But that's the daily bill finder is the first place that you ought to look. Now, how this can work for you is let's just get here to the, to the last bill. So the last bill today uh, in the Senate is Senate Bill 108. So the daily bill finder is, is going to add bills every day. So the, yesterday's bills don't go away. So if you know that you looked up to 108 today, tomorrow you start at 109 and keep on going. Okay? So that's how that works. Now, the bill finder will have all of the House bills first. Whoop. Okay. Um, so the House bill is 151. So we know that there's 151 House bills already filed and 108 Senate bills already filed. Um, that's the first thing you ought to do in the morning, is look at the daily, daily bill locator and just see what's there. Now, I'm going to go back. Uh, by the way, you can click on, on any one of these bills. Yes, you can click on any one of these bills. And, and it'll bring up the actual bill. Uh, PDF format or, or HTML format, they both look the same. And you can actually read the bill. So every bill is going to start out with, it's an act. Um, it might not say making an appropriation, but this year most of them will because it's a budget session. And if we want it in the, if we actually want to make sure 
that we're going to hear the bill, we start out by making an appropriation. Yes, sir. Just a question. I haven't mm -hmm. worked in another state in the mm -hmm. legislative process. Um, <clears throat> they were required to have an analysis done of that bill before it actually went on the bill finder before it could be, in fact, put in there. No. And the legislative analysts had to, in fact, do that, pros, cons, etc. And that was always part of that. So when I was reading through those bills that were being introduced, right. It always had an uh, analytical summary, right. pros and cons, irregardless of political spectrum, whatever, that was attached to it, which allowed me to really understand in a summary way what the heck was going on in terms of the funding, finance, etc. ramifications. That doesn't exist in the state of New Mexico, as I understand. Not as pre-filed. So on this page here, when there is one, you're going to see another, another spot down here that's going to say uh, FIR, that's the fiscal impact report. Now, it's a fiscal impact report even if there's no fiscal impact. There's still, if there's an analysis done by somebody, that's where it's going to be. The other things that eventually will be listed down here, you've got the title of the bill, the number of the title of the bill, who the sponsor is, that's always up there as soon as it's pre-filed. But then all of the actions uh, that happen, that's all this down here. And you'll probably have to go to key to abbreviations to figure out what each one of these things mean in here uh, until you've done it enough times. So I, I understand the Senate ones. The House then went and changed all their committee names. I have no idea what any of their stuff means anymore. Um, but there's the bill as it was introduced. Okay. Then it went to this first committee here, which I have no idea what that committee is, and that's the committee report. Uh, that's the next committee report. Then apparently there was a floor amendment that was, that was added to it. Then there was the final vote of the floor. Then there was the final vote of the Senate. This down here is the fiscal impact report. So that would give us the, the brief version of whatever it says. The fiscal impact reports all look the same. Yeah, just like that. That's exactly what it There we go. <laughs> so they all look the same uh, up top here. And so it'll you know, talk about whether there's money involved and where the money goes and how much and so forth. And you can see in this one it says indeterminate. But then you'll also see on here that there's different people that responded to it. So the Department of Public Safety and the AG and the Public Defender, they, they had something in this. One of the things on this particular one is the report There's just a little bit on page eight, but that's seven pages of single space typing. And I am one of the most gooderest uh, learned up people in the Senate. And that's sad. I can actually read in English and I probably won't read seven pages of stuff, especially if it's in some kind of quick succession of things, unless somebody calls me ahead of time and says, Hey, Bill, I'm concerned about this bill. I'm concerned about House Bill 560. Then I will stop and take the time to read it. But if it's one of those things that he was talking about that's happening kind of on the fly and it didn't go through my committee, I'm not going to read seven pages. Unless somebody calls me and tells me that there's something to be concerned about. Then I will. Then I can go back and call, call you back and say, hey, all right, well, I've read this analysis. What's wrong with this bill? or I've read this analysis, I see, I understand what's wrong with this bill. Um, but that's, that's why we're doing this right here, okay? Because these things will be up there. Now that analysis is supposed to be there before it ever goes to a committee. So when we go back here and we see that at first it was assigned to HSCAC, which I don't even know what that means, Okay, that's the, those are the committees it's going to go to. That's House Judiciary Committee. I get that. Okay. Um, and on day 15 is when it was assigned to the first committee. Day 33, it received a due pass from House Judiciary Committee. So we were already there for 30 days before anybody heard this bill. Senator? Yes. That's a legislative day. You could have been there for 50 days. Yeah, the way they roll the clock. And yeah, it's true. It's true, we could have been there 50 days. One of the things that happens, I, I, I can't admit this out loud. I'm kind of 
The official timepiece. Yes, the official timepiece in the Senate is is on the Senate floor leader's wrist. And if he says it's day three, then it's day three. If he says it's day 43, it's day 43. The reason that that's important, though, is because there are things that we cannot do on the same day. And so sometimes bills are introduced on day 30, which is the, in a long session, the last day you can introduce a bill is day 30. Okay. Then we roll the clock, and now it's day 31. Now, the sun didn't rise and set, but we have officially made it day 31. And we sent that bill to a committee, and then we got the committee report back, and we rolled the clock again. But still, the sun hasn't risen or set yet, and now we have the committee report, and now we can vote on that thing on the floor, and we roll the clock again, and we send it to the House, and without the sun rising or setting even once, we have gone through three or four legislative days. So what that means is early on in the session, we might be on day one for six or seven days because he wants to build up this cache of days and keep in his back pocket. So if he needs them, he can go through them. I'm just telling you how we play the game. I'm not telling you whether it's right or wrong. All right? <laughs> anyway, so so that's what these, uh, these mean here. So day 33, a due pass from uh, the House Judiciary Committee. On day 36, it received a, a due pass uh, from the House, although there was a floor amendment there, 56 to 0. Now, everybody hates this bill today. Nobody told any of us that beforehand. Yes, sir? The days that are on there, are those real days then? No, are those, those are fake days. So yeah, because we know some things went on with that and it went a whole lot quicker than what it looks like there. Yes. With no even possibility of getting on there. Right. And that's just I mean, how do you how do you overcome that? Well, so here's here's the what actually happened here. It probably really was introduced somewhere near day fifteen. It may have been day twenty in reality, I don't know, but there's a date Well, 311 is when it actually went to that committee. 313 is when it went to that committee. 317 is when it went to that committee. Those are real days down there. Okay. Those are real days? Yes, these down here are, because there's a, a, a date date. Okay. So, anyway, um, in that particular case, if you'd been looking at the bill locator every day and you see this and you look at it and go, wow, I don't know if this is good or bad, but it's something I want to look at, you have your people look at it and then you call us or warn us that, hey, there's something wrong. So one of the things that we can do is we can say, time out, there's, there's real problems with this bill. We can go to our leadership, alert our leadership and say, boss, this doesn't look right. Uh, I know this thing is flying through there. It flew through the house really fast. And what's interesting here is it, it received no actual committee uh, testimony. testimony in the Senate at all. So it went to Senate Judiciary and was withdrawn. That's the only committee that was sent to in the Senate, and it was withdrawn. No Senate hearings at all. And then it went on to the floor where we all voted for it again because, hey, nobody wants to have my stuff stolen by the police and sold before I even have my day in court. And that's the way the whole thing was, was sold to us. Police just stop your car to traffic stop. You're accused of being a drug dealer. They steal everything out of your car, sell your car, sell all your stuff, put you in jail. Next week they let you out of jail, but it's too late. All your stuff's sold. That's exactly the way it was presented to us. None of us want that. And there was no dissenting voices. No dissenting voices. Nobody called any of us and said, hey, that's, the, that's not what the bill does. So the big thing here where you can really have an effect is you that it passes out of one chamber or the other, because sometimes things start in the Senate, sometimes they start in the House. As soon as it passes out of one chamber, you call the other people in the chamber and say, this is stupid, don't do it. <laughs> okay. 
Okay? That is the one place where you actually do have a chance to, to really get our attention. Okay? You might not have a chance at committee level, especially when they withdraw it, but you have a chance at that point to do something. Uh, but even at that point, that's, uh, I hope all of you got our, our contact information. The very last name on there is Mike. So when you read the bill, when you see forfeiture, when you see that it affects you, and then you have your discussions, even before it goes to a committee, if you contact Mike and say, can you guys, can you look at this? And he'll tell me, somebody from your county is wanting us to look at this. I'll say, yes, definitely look at it, give me an analysis. Either I or he or somebody, maybe somebody from the committee that that's going to be assigned to, will make that call. Yeah. And then we can proceed from there. But at least if we're notified, then what I'll do is any bad bills or any good bills, I'm going to have for myself and for everybody else uh, from our local delegation, Mike's going to be forwarding on a watch list because just like that, it got pulled from the Senate committee and then the next thing you know, it's on a floor vote without ever going to committee. But if I have a little cheat sheet with me that says watch for Senate Bill 560 and then all of a sudden, there's Senate Bill 560 and we're getting ready to vote on this, at least you have an opportunity to filibuster or whatever it is you guys do on that side and, and, and drag it on, get some help. I mean, on their side, they, we got, we're, we're limited to three hours and then we'll vote. They can filibuster. And that will, can give them time to have leadership go and re-talk, you know, re-discuss uh, the, the issue here. But like I said, like, like Bill was saying, not even one word of any dissenting opinion. Then I, then I heard afterwards, well, we saw it, but we thought there's no way it'll get through. There's no way the governor will sign it. We're just so, not going to take that chance anymore. We should probably do two calls, right? One would be to Mike, but also is to our lobbyists. Yes. Yes. So Absolutely. I know, you're, I know most of your lobbyists. You can call way, us, call the lobbyists, call Mike. Call as many people as you can, especially if it's ugly. Okay. And you're with the schools, is that correct? San Juan. San Juan College? Yeah. I've underrated your bonds. So Scott is. Anyway, that would be a. I mean, that way it's really integrated coordinated. Yes. So one of the things I did here real quick is I went from this website over here to this new website, just so you can see it's a little bit different, except I clicked on the wrong thing, a little bit different, but it's got legislation. This one also has a subject line, which the other ones didn't. This one has, you can search by bill, and I'm going to show you that in a minute, by sponsor so you can see what kind of, what kind of stupid stuff uh, Senator Scherer put in or whatever, okay? Uh, keyword search. The deal with the keyword search, though, is if you don't know how to spell license, for example, and you put a C instead of an S in there, it won't find it for you. It's not smart enough to figure those things out. Uh, if you if you just type in, uh, I mean, it might not find it, but the subject search is a little bit better on this one because what it does is it then lets you pick from all of these different subjects here. So you can kind of go through and, and find it. With the keyword search, uh, you can type in the word food, for example. Um, with the key, whoops. With the keyword. On this one, not on, the, uh, not on the old one. So this one actually has a little bit better stuff, except you got to do that stuff every time. But... If you type in food, it's going to tell you that there's 12 pieces of legislation that have the word food in it somewhere. Now, it might be food stamps, it might be food service, it might be foodborne disease, but somewhere there's the word food in 12 pieces of legislation that have been introduced for this year's session. Bill, okay. can, I, can I say something? I, I quickly learned part of what you do in the title is to either get attention or avoid attention, okay? Uh, because I mean, that, this works both ways. I mean, the best thing I can do on the on the House floor, if I want to get something passed, is to not dawdle, to not explain and take my time. Uh, this is uh, this is House Bill 15, and uh, this bill makes all of the college curriculum uh, 
come into compliance from small schools to large schools. Um, I'll stand for questions. They haven't even I picked up the folder yet and started looking at what I'm talking about. They don't have time, and then the speaker will go, okay, seeing no questions, we'll go to a vote, slams that down, it's over. Okay, that's the procedures that take place at least in the House. I have no, you know, you guys got at least the Lieutenant Governor over there, um, but, but on the House side, it's boom, boom, boom. We're not wasting time on that because we've got a three-hour debate we're expecting on this other. So the title, I, when I read forfeiture uh, re, uh, reporting and and procedures, I don't know if I was in, if I was in law enforcement if I would pick that up right away, you know, potentially, but forfeiture can mean something else. It didn't, it didn't say asset. It didn't say asset forfeiture. It didn't say civil forfeiture. Law enforcement. None of that was in there. So your key word may or may not help you. So. Forfeiture procedures and reporting. That was the title of the bill. Yeah. May I speak to so. this for just a minute? Sure. This particular piece of legislation that they just showed you has cost uh, state agencies $2.6 million in the last year, roughly. And there were, I think, seven agencies that were contacted on this. And uh, so, What's interesting is the agencies aren't perfect either. They did not identify any particular uh, event that occurred. And so, as an analyst, if you think that we're perfect, we're not. Um, and I appreciate any thoughts that you have regarding what could impact your agencies or your your various uh, you know, your various constituents so that I can keep an eye on things and be careful to watch out for things that are of importance to San Juan County. So, and broader the state since we've got a senator. I've, I've put the word driver in there. So there's 10 pieces of legislation that have to do with, that have the word driver in them. So you can see where they are here. So they're not all about driver's licenses. So this first one's a DWI. Uh, this one is driver's license, this one is driver's license, and there's one more that's driver's license, real ID. So those three are driver's license. The rest of these are something else. Okay, so if you're just looking at, you know, what bills are the driver's license bills that's been in the news. So you can read those three, 94, 99, and 123. You can read those fairly easily, except, let's pull one up. Um... On this particular one, what we do when, we, when we, we're amending current law when we introduce a bill normally, unless you were really creating something fresh. And so this particular bill, I've got to go down here for a ways. Whoops, here we go. It's the underlying stuff which is new. Okay, so you can pull up House Bill 99, Underlying stuff is new. We're on page four before we hit the first new word. Everything else is current law, okay? So then there's a, then there's a whole bunch of more stuff here before it gets to stricken through stuff is new. So those are new words. Those are words we want to take out. But then you come down here where we've got a whole bunch of stuff, just page after page of new stuff here, okay? Now, sometimes the entire bill might be seven or eight pages long, but it's got three words that are new to it, three words that have added, okay? In this particular one, I think it's 40 pages or something like that, and I don't remember how long it is, but if you really want to know what's in the driver's license bill, that's what you've got to read and comprehend. And that's going a lot faster than I can read. Oh, only 32 pages. I exaggerated some. 32 pages. You're flipping through that. Sometimes it's longer than the hearing it gets on the Senate yes. or House floor if they're trying to rush it through. And so I bring that one up. This is a big one that you would expect all of us to read and understand because this is a big deal this year. My guess is in the Senate, there will be less than a dozen senators that actually read that bill. 42 of us and probably less than 12 will actually read that bill. 
A few more might read the analysis. Unless the analysis is just as long, then we won't read that either. Okay. So that's why it's important that if this affects you, y'all ought to read it or hire somebody that can read and read it and tell you what it says and then tell us what it says. I, I earlier joked that 49 other states have professional legislators and, and we, on the other hand, volunteer. What happens in the state gets all pushed into 30 days or 60 days. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think the way we're doing things is actually harming us because this could be stretched out. This whole process oh. could be stretched out. So anyway, go to the Daily Bill uh, locator every day, figure out where it is. You then look through there and just figure out which bills you're most interested in. Read those bills. Read the fiscal impact report. That's the first step in any of this. Go to the website, bill locator, actually look at the bill, look at the fiscal impact report. The next thing that's going to happen on any of this stuff is it's going to go to a committee. And so these are the, these are the standing committees. Now, we have committees that meet through the summer, uh, through what we call the interim. Uh, but these are the standing committees. These are the committees that it's going to go to while we're in session there. No. Normally, it goes through two committees. If somebody hates the bill and they're in leadership, they make it go to three or four. But um, normally, it's two. Okay? Two in the House and then two in the Senate. And then it goes to a vote of the entire House or entire Senate. So what you're going to see on these bills is what committees, well, Right now, the, the committee it's been assigned to, or the action it's got, is it's a House bill pre-filed. But the next thing, that when, when, after we're there, then it will be assigned to committees. And so you'll see where it's going to go, and uh, you can look up what those committees are and kind of follow through. So one of the, one of the um, you know, they took away my, my mouse privileges from me. So I can't drive anymore. So, so this is a committee I'm on. This is a Senate Corporations and Transportation Committee. And so you can see when it meets. Okay, When is it going to meet? Now, 2 o'clock is also kind of at the whim of the leader's watch. So 2 sometimes is 7 or 8 o'clock at night. 2 sometimes is 2. Well, no, it's never 2. It's never been 2. Sometimes it's close to two, but in the house, in the house they, they, they got, somebody bought them a watch. I don't know. <laughs> Senate, we don't have a watch yet. Okay. But then you'll see the agenda here of what bills we're supposed to hear that day. This is important. So you've already looked at the bill. You know it's going to go to Senate Corporations Committee. You know that it's supposed to be on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. Pay attention. Call us before that happens if it's a bill of concern, okay? Either way, I love this bill. Make sure it passes. I hate this bill. Make sure you kill it. Either way, that doesn't mean I can do either one of those, by the way, but at least I've got your input then. So, um, so you know which the legislation is. Go to the committees. Figure out when it's going to be there. And if it's there, if it's scheduled to be heard that day, and you, normally this will be the day before. Normally. Not always because sometimes we roll the clock and we have another committee hearing, right? So, but under normal circumstances, you should know the day before the bill's gonna be heard. That's really the day you wanna get a hold of the committee members. And so who are the committee members? Well, they're those people right there, okay? <coughs> and so here's why this is important. You can contact any one of these people. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna contact this weird guy on the bottom here. And bam, there's his picture. You know what he is. You know how to get a hold of him. You know what his phone number is there and <clears throat> what his email address is because um, I don't want anybody. It's inconvenient to answer the phone most of the time we're down there. But email is better. You can text us is better. Texting and emailing is better. It's just less intrusive into the conversation I'm having with the nine little kids that are standing in front of me. Okay. So... Anyway, so you contact us right there, and you say, wow, make sure that you, you support or oppose whatever bill you're on. And um, if you have some talking points, brief talking points, that's good. 
Oppose it because it's going to do this. Support it because it's going to do that. Okay. The reality is that we get a lot of information from a lot of sources. I have to tell you, one or two people from San Juan County calling me has a much greater effect than 50 lobbyists showing up telling me something about it. If one of y'all calls me, yes, it, but if one of y'all call me, it probably means something. Your lobbyist might mean something, but there's a lot of other people that show up that don't mean anything. And again, it's not necessary. Most things, by the way, in, in, in our legislative process aren't really Republican or Democrat. A lot of them are Albuquerque versus the rest of the same state. So one of the things that you'll need here is this key to abbreviation so you can figure out what all that stuff means there. And so it's real easy. You click on that button and it tells you what all these abbreviations mean that are all through there. This is valuable stuff because everything on the, on the daily bill locator is going to look like that mess of garbage that was up there, the bills that it, the committees it was assigned to and so forth. So the uh, abbreviations uh, key is, is important because um, it, it's got all the abbreviations that they normally use. But here's the House committees. You know, so I don't know what, Hinnick? Okay, well, energy, environment, natural resources, okay. So <laughs> um, then down here, the Senate committees, uh, kind of the same way. What, what, where'd it go? Okay, so Senate Conservation Corporations, uh, Senate Education, Senate Finance. So those are the, uh, so you can track it and then make sure you're, you're contacting the right person, okay? You can always contact any one of us from San Juan County, whether we're on that committee or not. So you got a problem, you think, oh my goodness, make sure that you kill this bill. I mean, I'm not on the education committee, but that doesn't mean you can't call me and say, hey, this is a bad bill or a good bill, okay? Because if you call me, then I will pay attention to it. Because I'm not on the education committee, if I don't receive a call from somebody, I probably am not gonna pay attention to it. Now that somebody might be you know, my daughter or my grandson, but it also might be the administrator or a teacher, okay? So, uh, unless somebody calls me on those kind of bills, I'm not gonna watch. Can you explain tabled? Tabled. So, one of the ways that we don't kill things but effectively kill them anyway is to table them in committee. So it used to be, once upon a time, there was a do pass or a do not pass vote. So you could clearly see that I said, I don't want this to pass. I vote do not pass, okay? But then legislators who are generally weaklings started getting people complaining that we were voting badly. And so we moved to table. Now, sometimes tabling's okay. Ways and Means Committee, they table everything. That doesn't necessarily mean it's dead. In most other committees, once it's tabled, it's gone. It's dead. Can you bring it back off the table? Yes, technically. But sometimes it is very, very difficult to do that. Right? So uh, there are some things that happen. Uh, Senate Corporations Committee is a nine-member committee. It takes five to make a quorum. Okay. So it could be that four people were doing something else at that time. So you had five people in the room, three motion to table, done. It's tabled. Later, these four show back up and they go, wait a minute, what did we table that for? We moved to take it off the table. Well, these three still voted against it, but now all of a sudden there's enough votes to, to bring it back to life. But tabled generally means we killed it. But we don't say do not pass because, well, then you yell at us and it makes us cry. So, let me see, let me see. Okay, so the standing committee's thing, bill finder, find the actual bill, read the bill, read the analysis, follow here. So the other thing I wanted to show you, no, 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 no. So the, now finding us individually, okay, so it's, you can, if you don't know who you're, uh, representative. Okay, so I put in 105 Orchard Street, which is a building I know exists, and it says, that's your representative, okay? So if you're, if you're wondering about that or thinking about that, you can, 
And so now you know how to contact him. So you, can, so you can click on his name or click on his information. What's interesting here, though, is on this is the new website, by the way. This is the new website. So you say, yeah, I know that. It's the Senate that I wanted to know. So boom, that brings up your senator. Um, but you can look at other things, too. Um, our congressman apparently doesn't like his picture taken, but it tells you who he is, okay, and who the, who the Senate senators are for the area. So you can, you can contact those folks as well from this website. <coughs> so I think that's important. The other thing that uh, it does down here, if I can get down here, oh, is it tells you what the district looks like. But obviously, I clicked on something else on my way down, so because that looks like a uh, that looks like a board of education district. Yes, public education commission district number five. So if you're not wondering where you are, um, because it does. I think there's five things in here. Yeah, public regulations, congressional district, House and Senate districts. Those are the things that you can look for in here, and it'll show you what the district looks like there. So uh, in this case here with the Senate district, just very quickly, you almost can't see it here. Little tiny spot is District 1 versus these other districts over here, which are massive. Now, once you get into Albuquerque, the districts are, you know, a few blocks long, but Senate District 1, uh, which is right here, it's Farmington, is pretty small compared to most Senate districts outside Albuquerque. There you go. So, nmlegis.gov, there's two websites there. The new one, I think, is a little bit easier to navigate, but they both have the same thing. Go to the daily bill locator, look up the bill. Every day, is there anything in there that scares me? Remember, normally government does it to you, not for you. So is there anything out there that scares you? The next thing is read the bill, read the analysis, check to see what committee it's going to go to. If, you're, if you know people on that committee, call them. It, you don't, they don't necessarily have to live in your district. I, you know, for example, I would take a phone call from my brother who lives in Clovis. Okay. Um, so if you know somebody on that committee, it's always best to call them. Okay. Uh, if not, certainly you can call the six of us from San Juan County, and I think our names are on that list there. You can call us, you can call Mike, and make sure we know what's going on. Email and text are better ways than calling, in my opinion. You can give me more information, but still try to keep it short. It's likely this year that there's going to be over 2,000 bills introduced. I don't want to read that much, mostly because it's boring. Okay. Uh, and, and I have found myself you know, on page 17 of a bill, and I can't even remember starting it. So, you know, obviously there was no comprehension for those first 17 pages. Um, <laughs> so uh, so that's, those are the things I want you to remember, okay? Really remember, website, bill locator every day, figure out where that bill's going and then contact us. Either way, that's what's important. So. Now, you don't need to call us individually when you first find the bill and you're nervous about it, take a little bit of time to look at it. Contact Mike first, because that personal contact when I'm in committee, it's probably best if it's relating to something I'm going to have to do that day, or it's right around the corner, or it's, you know, imminent. If it's not imminent and it's still important, contact Mike. Okay. But don't wait. Don't wait. Contact us as soon as you know that there's an issue. Don't wait, because it might be withdrawn from the committee, and we'll never get here. And a lot of what, a lot of what I'm, what we what we've talked about today, and what, what what Bill has shown you, this is good information for your lobbyist. This is good for you to be making sure your lobbyist is taking care of your interests. That's what they're there for. But, but quite frankly, the last three years, I really feel like. With what stop gaps have been in place, they've all been missed. <laughs> there are some things, really, there are some things you can do. These things are all webcast now. Okay? Most of the committees are, most of the floor sessions are webcast. 
um, but not always. Uh, in that particular case, there is a little bit of delay. So if it's too long, I mean, if, if you text me and say vote no, vote yes, I might not get it until after I voted because of the delay, okay? But uh, you can do that. Now, we have rules saying that we're not supposed to get coached from the gallery. But those rules were written before everybody had a cell phone and could text me, okay? So you can watch and, and, and do that. You can watch the committees and say, I'm not sure I understand this. Ask this question. And I might do it. Might not, but I might. I mean, certainly if you don't tell me to, I won't, okay? But if you, if you ask me to, I might. So webcasting is, is important. You can follow that along, and you can do exactly that. You can, you can tell us. Now, sometimes I'm still going to vote against you because, well, it's what I want to do. But, uh, but again, something from somebody I know carries a lot of weight. So especially if it's a bill, I don't know. I hope this was helpful. And I hope you understand a little bit of the constraints we have um, and the time pressure we have and the number of bills that there are going to be. It's virtually impossible to read every bill. I can read every bill, and I might understand, uh, you know, 25% of what I'm reading because it's written in a different language. Literally, I've gone to lawyers and said, okay, the way I'm reading this, it says this. I said, oh, no, no, that's the point, but it's exactly opposite because this word is meant to manipulate everything else. And so uh, things are not written necessarily in plain English. And so even when you read it, you might get really nervous about something and that is not what it says. However, if there's a potential for a different interpretation, then at the very least, we can interrupt it and change the language to where it's clear. And we can do that in committee, on the floor, or whatever. And, uh, you know, just to make sure that there's not some unintended consequences. But uh, with that, I'd like to have Mike just say a couple of words as an analyst. He's done this a couple of times. And before you go, I, I asked Bob to forward this to, to those of you who had email addresses for. If you haven't got, if you don't, if you haven't received this yet with all of our contact information and, and Mike's, um, please get this. Um, we're literally, it's next week. So this, this game plan has to go into effect. If there's somebody else who was not here, I, I, I'm glad you recorded this. If there's somebody who said they couldn't make it and they are interested in the training or you've now seen the training and you said, you know, I really should have invited somebody. I thought it was just these guys really wasting our time. So now it wasn't a waste of time. We want to share it with more people. Again, my name is Michael Meyer. Uh, I have worked as a legislative analyst in prior sessions in business and industry as well as ways and means. And I've done a number of volunteer projects for different legislators uh, over the years. So I know a fair amount about the, the process. And the senator is correct. What will happen, and he knows it better than me, is uh, once these bills get introduced, and there are several hundred of them already, uh, they will uh, go to various committees probably beginning next week. And at that time, the uh, financial... Uh, FIRs will begin to start showing up. Usually those FIRs are done 24 hours in advance of when they go to the various committees. Sometimes that does not occur as the session goes on. Additionally, if there are changes to uh, the legislation in the committees, oftentimes you'll see new FIRs, so don't, don't think that just because one FIR showed up, it's, it's going to be the last one. There could be others. If you have knowledge of certain areas, I'm, I'd appreciate knowing what you know. Uh, it helps me in my process to give you a little bit of knowledge on my background. Um, I'm a natural resource economist by training. I've taught at a couple of universities. I've also got a banking and investment banking background. I was a bond underwriter for many years. I've underwritten bonds for the county, for the school districts throughout San Juan County, for PNM through IRBs. Uh, and a number of other things. So I know San Juan County fairly well. I have business operations in McKinley County right on the San Juan County border. But I live in Albuquerque, and so um, 
it's it's kind of interesting. I'm I'm up here a fair amount. I've been up here to visit the representative here fairly recently, so I'm up here quite a bit. Um, if there's things that come up during the session or after the session that you just want me to look at, I'm happy to do it for you. My, you know, I think what these gentlemen do and the ladies that, uh, for example, Representative Clutches Chilich, it's it's amazing what they do. I think the fact that they spend their time doing this is quite a statement, and you've got some very good legislators. So, cost me extra. No. so I'm happy to be here, and you know, again, if there's anything I can do for you, uh, my hours are eight to five, but I've never ever worked eight to five at the legislature. So um, I'm available just about any time. It may t take me a little bit of time to get back to you. I will also have a legislative phone number, although I don't know what that is yet. But I'll be right outside of the representative's office, and he will tell me what to do. Bob, okay. We'll get that information to you once, yeah. once we have that information. I'm his legislative assistant. Sometimes he calls me the director of first impressions, and I better make good impressions. So I try to do my best, but if there's anything that you think I can improve on, please let me know. <laughs>